moving projects between different digital audio workstations has always been a nightmare. Often standards that have been created aren't supported fully by companies and often lack different very important features such as MIDI and virtual instruments. Plug-in compatibility is also an issue. We wanted to develop a foolproof way to make sure that all of your projects can be carried over easily to any other workstation with Cubase's batch export function. Now, one of the features you want to do to kind of get things set up is to make sure first that everything will be batch exported between the left and right locators. So if your locators aren't set around the whole project, an easy way of doing this is to kind of select all the files in your project, then hit the letter P as in Paul, and that will automatically set your left and right locators around all of the different parts. Now we need to go to the file menu and go to export audio mix down. And generally this is where we would take our files and if I wanted to do a stereo mix, I could just simply choose my stereo mix right there. But we could also enable what we call the channel batch export by checking this little icon here. What we could do now is come right here and we could go to our group channels our effects channels, so our effects return channels, our outputs, our VST instruments, as well as our audio channels right here. So now as I do this, I can select each of these files and what we could have it do is automatically export each of these as individual audio files because every workstation can play back standard audio files. Now I want to choose exactly where I want the files to be exported to. So I'll put it into this folder and I could just make a new folder if I wanted to. So we'll call this export to, I'll hit create. And I want to also come right over here. I could do mono down mixes, left, right channels, real time export if I was doing with uh, external processing gear, but I could also choose to make a new project. Now we have different types of file formats inside of Cubase. So in this project, for instance, we have stereo files and mono files. When we do a batch export, everything will kind of be going, be routed to the channel configuration of the outputs. So if I wanted to come here, one of the things I could do is if I wanted my mono channels to be mono and my stereo to be stereo, I could go to my VST connections and I'm gonna to go to my outputs and I'm gonna add a mono bus. So we'll just choose mono bus here, hit OK. And now I'm gonna open my mixer. And as I go to my mixer under devices menu, I can make sure that my mono channels, such as my vocals, are all going to the mono output bus. And this will, when we do the rendering, will automatically make my mono tracks mono and my stereo tracks could be stereo or my surround tracks can be in surround. So now I'll route these out to my mono and now what I want to do is to go to my file, to my export audio mix down. And I could have this automatically create a new project for me, choose the sample rate, the bit depth. I could also incorporate these directly into the project as audio tracks and into the pool. And now I'll just click export. And then we'll just overwrite this. And now within about a minute, it's going to take all of my files, make equal length audio files. Now also all the processing such as EQs as well as the as well as the insert effects will automatically be applied to the channel so that when we play it back in our project, it will actually sound exactly the same as it did when it left our Cubase. Now this is also ideal for if you're working in a collaborative sense and you know that you have some great tricks that you don't want to necessarily share with everyone in a world that gets access to the project, you could actually keep all of your tricks hidden and just simply give these to the actual record company or to the, another collaborator. So this is very easy way of being able to share your files to keep your intellectual property and to be able to maintain the original files and but have them be able to be played back in any system. So there's no need to have different programs just for compatibility because these files can be loaded into a hardware hard disk recorder, a hardware digital audio workstation, uh, into any other program. And as we see, we'll just be about finished. And it's actually quicker than real time. So I don't have to do each individual file in real time like we'd have to do with other programs. And as it's wrapping up here, we'll see that it'll create a new audio project for us. We'll have our stereo tracks be stereo, 
as well as now it's going to be rendering our files and we could just see now that all of our tracks have now been rendered to equal length anyone could start the files could load them into their program just simply select all your files and then you could just simply say move to in cubase you would say move to origin and then that would automatically place them at their original timestamp position so as you can see being able to render all of your files so that it can work in any other program with all of your effects, all of your groups, all of your audio files, all your virtual instruments can, is very, very easy using Cubase.